the Joe Rogan experience. This this uh, congressman is that who it is? Yeah. The, Jamie pointed this out that there's a congressman and he released a series of tweets and the first letter of all these tweets if you put them all together it says Epstein didn't kill himself or did not kill himself is that what it is? Didn't, yeah, I think it's didn't he did uh, I'll pull it up. <laughs> yeah, how do you do the <laughs> apostrophe? Yeah, you can't. So you like, should have gone with did not starting here with that evidence of a link in Rep the Paul e. Gosser what are the odds that this guy did this accidentally? Really small, right? Yeah, that's kind of like one of those monkeys typing Shakespeare things. Yeah, yeah I don't think it could, uh, it could work. And the thing is, he did it backwards, right? So right, you see. didn't see what the puzzle was until the last tweet. Because Who the last that? tweet is an E. I got a tweet from someone about 35 minutes ago that I don't know if there's a bunch of people online paying attention to it or what, but... Someone alerted me and a few other people of it. What is he? Does he have an image of that fucking that crazy mask? Is that in his shit too? Okay, he's yeah, a weirdo. That might be the H of. He's the, got the. Not until that was November first. So <laughs> the V like, mask. Yes. Yeah. What, what is that mask again? What is v that for Vendetta. What was yeah. it representative of? It was something. It's the Guy Fox mask. Yes, that's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. So this guy is. Uh, he's he's thinking along alternative lines of thought, but that is really uh, an interesting way of saying it. Alphabetry, that's called. Yeah, just making a bunch of tweets. Don't ever address it. Just leave it there. Walk just leave away. It there. Yeah, Lewis Carroll was famous for that. Was he? Yeah, that was one of. Uh, he he did, he did a lot of sort of tricks with words. Um, did you read the book Gödel Escher Bach? No. Yeah, there's there's a whole whole bunch of stuff in there about people who used um, who put puzzles in text. Mm. You know, it's kind of a thing that that people did, I guess, back more in the. 18th century and before well yeah. this Epstein case is probably the most blatant example of a public murder of, of a crucial witness I've ever seen in my entire life or anybody's ever seen and the 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 minimal amount of outrage about this the oh. minimal, minimal amount of cover it's fucking fascinating I, I mean I what's amazing to me just as a you know somebody who works in the media is that this was shaping up to be the biggest like news story in history yes and the instant he, you know, he died, uh, or was died, or however you want to call it, yeah. um, it, the story just fell off the face of the earth. It yes. just, it's like nobody's doing anything about it, and I, I don't a hundred percent understand that. I mean, I, I get it why why that's happening, but it's uh, it, it's just amazing. Well, when the woman from ABC, what was her name? Amy. Amy. Uh -huh, that lady, the the one who Robach. Robach, Robach yeah. Who had the frustrated moment that she called it a pr frustrating private moment right when she was talking about having the scoop and having that story and them squashing it right like this this is all stuff that everybody used to think was conspiracy every everybody's think this was stoner talk this was you know <laughs> you know what i mean like this is stuff where people are just delusional they believe all kinds of wacky conspiracies sure but the, the reality is much less complicated well this is not possible this is one of those things that's so obvious it's so in everyone's face well, there's a couple of things going on because there, there are many different ways that this can play out. I mean, you could have a news director who just sort of instinctively decides, well, we can't do that story because I might want to have Will and Kate on later or mm. I might want to have this politician on later. And it's, it's not like anybody tells them necessarily that we can't do this. But they just they, decide too hot. You, if you grow up in this system and you've been in the, the business for a long time, you, you just you, – you have all these things that are drilled into you at almost like the cellular level about mm. what you can and cannot get into. And um, I think, there, but there were some exp explicit things that happened with Epstein too. I mean, they, there, there were a lot of news agencies that killed stories about him that, you know, and we're hearing about some of them, Vanity Fair, this thing, you know. So, yeah, it's, 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 it's bad. It's terrible. Yeah, yeah. When, when I found out that Clinton flew no less than 26 times on a plane with Epstein, I was like, dude, I haven't flown that many times with my mom. <laughs> and how right. long did he know Epstein? Yeah, I, I don't know. But, I mean, to have that many flights, to have the Secret Service uh, people involved, I mean, that's incredibly bold. Uh, what was he doing? Was just girls? Was, is, is, is Clinton that much of a hound? That he would go that deep into the well that many times, 26 times? Well, that's the thing about the Epstein story that makes no sense to me. Like, I, I thought that the percentage of people who were out and out, like, perverts who had a, a serious problem, like, with pedophilia or whatever, it was, was pretty small, you know? Yeah. But, you're, but they had a lot of people coming in and out of this compound, and... and 
it just seems like it's a um, it's a very strange story. What were they really up to? I have I have no idea. And was was it all a blackmail scheme? It's just it's just so strange. Well, it seems like the pedophilia aspect of it might be directly connected to Epstein himself. Like he mm-hmm. might be the one that has a problem with girls that are like sixteen, and he likes them very young, or mm-hmm. he did like them. But with the other guys. It could just be girls. Could be, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's why it's so crazy. Like, how could it be that these? But maybe it's not. But they must. But they knew who he was. Yeah, but they probably didn't know the extent of it. Probably not. Yeah, uh, up until a point. Up until he was arrested. Right. And then they're like, oh, but then then that's when everybody backed off of him, right? Yes. Yeah. I mean, I'm not a hundred percent. Yeah, I, I haven't covered this story in depth. I've only I only really got into it a little bit. We when, need you. We need you on this one. You're the guy. (laughs) This is a tough one. I mean, you know, because it mixes a lot of things that are are very tough to cover. Yes. You know, the intelligence world is very tough to cover. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, it's it's hard to get stories out of there that they don't want you to have. Yeah. And this is this is like the mother of all stories. And you know, in in terms of that, and they're just little little breadcrumbs here and there. That whole thing about Acosta, you know, the vanity um, vanity fair quote from him is that when he said. That when he looked at the case, that he didn't do it because I was told he belonged to intelligence. Yes. What does that mean? Right. You know, whose intelligence? You know what I mean? Right. Like, what agency? Well, what for? You right. know? And then you, you pair that with things like, you know, I, I have friends on Wall Street who tell me, I've never heard a, a single instance of this guy actually having a trade. Right. You know, so what was his hedge fund doing? You know, I mean, if you think about it, a hedge fund's a perfect way to do blackmail, you right. know, because... You can just have people putting money in and out all the time, and it would look like investment. Yeah. You know? So, very strange story. Well, very Eric strange. Weinstein had a conversation with him. You know, Eric Weinstein mm-hmm. is with Peter Thiel Capital. Right. Yeah. He, he's like, this guy doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. Oh yeah, he's like he's financially. A fake. Yeah, yeah, he's like yeah. he's an actor. Right. Like, this is nonsense. Right, right. A that stand-in. was his initial, almost instantaneous response. Yeah, yeah. And 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 what real clients did he ever have? What yeah. did he What did he trade in? What what? How's he got a billion dollars or whatever he had? Yeah, no, half it's, a, it's half a billion under management. Yeah, yeah, that's ridiculous. Why did the guy who owns Victoria's Secrets give him a seventy million dollar home? Right. In New York City. Like what? I mean, these are all things that would have been really interesting to get into, you know. If he didn't, uh, uh, if he didn't uh, try he, to kill himself, if twice. the suicide didn't happen to him, like in the wire. Poor right? fella. Yeah, yeah. It's just Crazy. so unfortunate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so unfortunate that the cameras died. Uh, so unfortunate he sustained an injury that's uh, that you usually only get through strangulation. Right. Yeah. Someone murders you. He fell on the ground and accidentally broke his hyoid bone. Yeah. Happens all the time. Whatever. Right? Yeah. No big deal. <laughs> I mean, it's so bizarre. I'm, I I can't stand cons- conspiracy theories. I'm one of these people who who doesn't like reading, but I, I can't I can't make the story work in a way that isn't you know conspiratorial. Yeah. In some well, way. that's the thing. It's like it gets to a point where you're like, okay. Even Michael Shermer, who runs Skeptic Magazine, was mm-hmm. like, wait a minute, the cameras were not working? Yeah. I mean, it's like, such okay, a bad well, this, excuse. This seems like a conspiracy. <laughs> fucking when Michael Shermer says, right. seems, he, that guy doesn't believe in anything. Right. I right. mean, he is fucking, he's down the line on virtually every single thing that's ever happened. He doesn't believe in any conspiracies. Well, well, how do you, what's the innocent explanation for any of this? none. It doesn't yeah, make you, any you, sense. You can't, you can't spin it in any way to make it not a, re, a crazy conspiracy theory. Especially when the, the brother hires a doctor to do an autopsy. And oh, the yeah. The doctor says, like, Baden. this guy was fucking murdered. Right. Yeah, Michael Baden, the, the famous guy from the HBO autopsy show. Right. Yep. Absolutely. Oh. <sighs> craziness. Complete craziness. And, you know, it's, it's an example of, of, um, you know the Epstein story is interesting because it's because it's about villains on both sides of the aisle, right? Yeah. This is the classic. This is something I've written about before: is that the press does not like to do stories where the problem is bipartisan. Yeah. Right. So when you have an institutional problem, when Democrats and Republicans both share responsibility for it, when you know, or or if it's an institution that kind of exists in perpetuity, no matter what the administration is, we don't really like to do those stories. We like if. Fox likes to do stories about Democrats. MSNBC likes to do stories about Republicans. But the the thing that's kind of you know all over the place, they don't like to do that story. Epstein is you know he's he's friends with Trump and and with Clinton. I mean, yeah. it looks like he has more friends on the Clinton side, but still. And I think that's this is one of the reasons why this story doesn't have a lot of traction in the media because neither side really likes the idea of going too deeply on it. Feels right. like to me. 
Well, it's but the 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 blatant aspect of it. The only, I mean, the closest that we have to that is an absolute murder, the Jamal Khashoggi mm-hmm. murder. That's the closest thing we have to it. Was absolute murder, right? This one, but but it's also so insanely blatant. But now you have foreign actors that are involved in it, and they all disperse, and then there's left with this confusion of to who's responsible for it. Well, Saudi Arabia. That's another example where you can't really say it's you know one side of the. Well, look, both parties have been incredibly complicit in their cooperation with yeah. the Saudi regime and in you know the massacres that are going on in Yemen. Um, it's a classic example of what Noam Chomsky used to talk about with worthy and unworthy victims, right? Mm-hmm. Like if the if the Soviet communists did it, they were that was bad. But if death squads in El Salvador killed a priest or a Catholic priest, you know, then that that was something we didn't write about because they were our client state. Yemen is a story we don't write about Syria, is a story we do write about, but they're really equivalent stories. And, um, you know, the, but you're absolutely right. The Khashoggi thing, I, I don't think either party and or either side's media really wants to get into that all that deeply. 